This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. This is the Helix Killer. Um, I saw Eric Klein, who is the product designer for the Helix, I believe that's his name. He had commented on a Facebook group. Uh, someone had asked, you know, why are there so many Helixes coming up for sale? And um, yeah, he had some fairly salty responses to this. And I thought kind of be funny to talk about this a little bit um, and kind of maybe talk about the Helix, where it's at. So Eric, uh, so the, the first comment that came up was uh, maybe a few. We're privy to industry-wide sales numbers. Helix is still doing exceedingly well, and that's despite Line 6 never having to repeatedly lie to their customers, make grotesquely exaggerated promises, feign innovation, can't read today, while blatantly copying other companies' designs, layouts, implementation, get employees to troll online forums anonymously, nor etch cringy narcissistic platitudes onto our circuit boards. It, it feels like they may be talking about neural DSP here, right, Eric? <laughs> There's a reason every new multi-effect is touted to dealers, distributors, and influencers as their Helix killer, not their Axe Effect killer, Head Rush killer, Kemper killer, or Quad Cortex killer. We know because those dealers, distributors, and influencers talk. Now, actually, the Tonex made sense to be called as a, a Kemper killer, and actually... I think I used quad cortex killer, or maybe well, maybe I didn't use the word quad cortex killer. I, for me personally, I think it's kind of funny to use the word killer in this context because it's. Um, hey, he also said interesting. Interestingly enough, Helix floor rack and LT have been the most future-proof hardware products ever released in the MI industry. I'm not sure about that. Even Tide Eclipse received an effects date update over 20 years after its inception. But that wasn't a full architecture or modeling engine upgrade like we've done for Helix. Kemper has been around for longer than the Helix and still getting meaningful updates. That would be the one pushback I'd have to that one. Another point that he made, unlike the majority of boxes in this space, however, Helix's core architecture and modeling engine is likely newer, reworked yet again in 2023, and its audio specs are still best in class. No, it can't run half a dozen poly pitch blocks, but nothing else can either. And chances are Helix can add more simultaneous blocks than self-professed Helix killers released just last year. I think he's talking about the Tone Master Pro there. Everyone should shop with their ears and context, not with a calendar. And I think that's a, a really interesting point about not shopping with a calendar. Although at the same point, he's saying we updated more recently than some of these things. So I think... There is a point there to be made, but what, because I get people asking you, know, like, I'm considering jumping from a Helix LT to a Quad Cortex and vice versa. I feel like this still, to me, looks like the sort of thing that if it wasn't this size, could really have been released fairly recently. And the 
Tone Master Pro shrunk it down quite a, a small amount. And then the Quad Cortex, I think, is the real... Where you look at it and go, okay, that is a really pretty powerful f form factor, right? And Neural DSP are actually now getting close to catching up with their plug-in stuff. Um, so the idea of there being a Helix Killer, I think... I don't know. This is still super, super easy, super fast to use. And I think you can watch some Steve Stalacci comparison videos of um, workflow with a Helix and like the Tone Master Pro, for example, which the Tone Master Pro, I think, is the thing out there that a lot of users kind of will say this is the, the easiest thing to use that I've ever tried. But um, I think also the Tone Master Pro is reaching an audience that maybe the Helix never really did because it seems like there's some kind of people coming around to the idea of modeling kind of like they did with quad cortex where some people the first modeler they ever bought was a quad cortex or a tone master pro but 2015 coming up to nine years old in june right i think there's loads of life in the helix still and if it were to be the case that you've already got one I still don't think there's a huge reason to jump to either a Quad Cortex or a Tone Master Pro based on my experience. If anything, some of the cloud stuff can be kind of frustrating if it doesn't connect to your Wi-Fi super easily. There are some aspects of it that I really like, like the Quad Cortex, the form factor I really liked. Some of the capture stuff in there, pretty cool as well. And I think that is one area where I think there is a bunch of, of users within the Helix world that as much as they love Helix still kind of look across and compare that particular feature that Kemper, Quad Cortex, Tonex have and they kind of think why can't we have that sort of thing in here but in terms of like the amount of effects, tweakability, ease of use as well as pretty much being top tier in a lot of areas I think the Helix for me still takes it can I call you back in five? Yeah, we're in now anyway, right? Oh, we're in the house. But I think there is still a company out there that has done such a lot of work that is basically, I think it looks to me, the pace of change staying as it is. It seems like Neural DSP have really quite slowed down. And although they made a lot of noise at the start about sort of catching up and disrupting and all that sort of stuff um, and Fender have done something similar sort of try to, to give that impression as well the the company that has been there pretty much as long as Line 6 and maybe even because Line 6 themselves have given credit to, to, to Fractal for um, essentially showing that there was a market for a flagship type modeler that wasn't kind of at the cheaper end of the market and that is the fractal stuff right and i think they've maintained a consistent approach for the many many years that they've been doing stuff which was before helix was around anyway right so i can remember misha mansour made a switch from a, a pod would it have been an hd over to the first kind of fractal stuff and even back then there seemed to be like a a a gap in terms of you know like fractal was aiming for something which wasn't maybe super easy to use but super super functional and even to this day can do things that the helix can't do and that no other modeler can do i think if you had a, a list of like features that the the fractal stuff like hits way more stuff than any of the other units um more effects more tweakable effects way more amp models than all of the others combined you do have tone match capability if you can work out how to use it and that i guess is the main kind of drawback with some of the fractal stuff is that even for me where i make videos every single week with it um there is definitely a learning curve but it's not insurmountable and the stuff that you can do on the surface of it is also sounding really good works really well as well so i think as much as the, the helix killer stuff that we get pointed to like the quad cortex or the tone master pro i wouldn't say that those are but i would say fractal is a definite alternate 
Um, even if it's not my daily driver, I would say that that might be an area that I might look if I was kind of thinking, well, I'm feeling like this technology is too old or whatever, because Fractal are another company that have continued like updates and overhaul their engine. Like they've just done that for the Axfex 3, with the Cygnus X3. I, I wouldn't call it a Helix killer though, because I still use my Helix all the time. And the other benefit that Helix has, which is totally unique to the Helix, is that you've got Helix native. So the ability to run Helix presets, signal chains in your DAW, that is something that has allowed me to completely get out of the hardware situation altogether and just plug straight into my computer. I think that's a huge game changer. I think it's going to be the way of the future. Um, but yeah, that, that was kind of just some thoughts like the Helix killer. I don't think anything has particularly killed the Helix just yet. Except for maybe the HX Stomp, ironically, which I feel like for so many people, myself included, makes so much sense and is relatively way cheaper for pretty much access to the same amount of stuff. Less processing power, but you can make do with it. For me, the HX Stomp is where my attention goes most these days rather than the Helix and also Helix Native, um, which actually is even replaced my HX Stomp in my normal workflow as well. So yeah, what killed the Helix for me, I guess, was Helix native, weirdly. But gigging with this actually on the floor is a really, really great experience for me. The scribble strips and all that stuff have been fantastic. Um, the quad cortex, when I gigged that, sounded really good, but I found the foot switching a bit limited. Tone Master Pro, when I gigged with it, didn't sound really good. Sounded quite scooped. I was using a Friedman emulation, which some stuff came out about that later on. Um, out of the three of them, I think still the Helix would be the one that I would choose. Fractal is a very, very viable alternative. And I think more updates than, than Line 6, although the hardware gets updated a bit more as well. So I don't know. Let me know your thoughts and let other people know your thoughts in the comments. Um, I thought it was kind of funny to see Eric having a pop like that because it is kind of yeah when you see certain products called helix killers that maybe are new to the market that don't really have a full capability yet kind of interesting let's see where this quad cortex plugins things end up as well because that's apparently coming soon